2 Chronicles 31. Now when all this was finished, the Passover, all Israel that was present went out to the cities of Judah and broke the images in pieces and cut down the groves and threw down the high places and the altars out of all Judah and Benjamin and Ephraim and also Manasseh until they had destroyed them all. Look at look at that revival. We have a Passover we got right with God. We're celebrating what God's given us. It's the wrong time, but God's allowed us to do it. We got the priest right. All right, we serve the Lord. Let's go get rid of religion. That's what it is. Groves and images, that's religion. Are we going to see a revival in, in a country? Not if you get, don't get rid of images. You know, when we had the Great Awakening in America, bars were closed. People weren't buying alcohol. We had a period of time called a prohibition. Movie theaters shut down. Preachers were hired by, by men to try to, I mean, men hired against preachers to kill the preachers. Billy Sunday would have, have his life threatened by the alcohol uh, business disclosures that he caused. That's not going to happen today. The revival is you got to get rid of the junk. You may have an individual revival inside of a person that gets saved, that gets rid of all the junk in his body, he gets rid of the alcohol, he gets rid of the images, he gets rid of those rules, he gets rid of the cigarettes, he gets rid of all his sins. But you're not going to have a national one. High places, whatever you put above God. Altars. And look, in Benjamin, that's part of your Ephraim and Manasseh, you're going north. Those are the children of Joseph. The Bible says about Ephraim, he's joined the idols, let him alone. Well, he's got a little right this time. Until they had utterly destroyed them all. So when they start this back up again, they're going to have to begin from the beginning. Then all the children of Israel returned every man to his possession, went home, went to their houses to their own city. So they didn't leave Jerusalem until they cleaned it up. They didn't leave Judah until they cleaned it up. And Hezekiah appointed the courses, this was set by David, of the priests and Levites after their courses. So not only does he set up the courses, but he looks at what David's done. All right, this family belongs to this course. This family does it at this particular time. It's not done haphazardly. It's done according to what David has set for Every man according to his service, the priests and Levites for burnt offerings and for peace offerings, to minister and to give thanks and to praise in the gates of the tents of the Lord. He appointed also the king's portion of his substance for the burnt offerings. So he's allowing the Levites and priests to say, listen, this is mine. You take that of mine and use it for the burnt offerings. So he's allowing his possession to be part of the sacrifices for the people. To wit, that means to know. For the burnt morning and evening burnt offering. For the burnt offerings for the Sabbath. And for the new moons that's the beginning of their month. And for the set feast as is written in the law of the Lord. He said, use my animals for the morning and evening service. That would be the lamb in the morning, lamb in the evening. And for the Sabbath and for the new moon. I give my animals for that, or whatever is needed. Moreover, he commanded the people, the people that dwelt in Jerusalem, to give the portion of the priests and the Levites that they might encourage in the law of the Lord. Give to the priests. Give to the Levites. Forgive me, my throat's charged. They got to survive. They need food. They need money. They need to survive. Give to them. Now, as soon as as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of corn, wheat, wine, that's grapes, and oil, olives, and of honey. He said, well, what can the priests do with all this honey? They could sell it. The priests were allowed to sell it. Because remember, honey wasn't burnt. Honey was, honey, you know, something that, un and leavened bread was not to be offered. So they could sell what, what was excess and all the increase of the field. 
That would be figs. That would be everything they grew out of their garden. When it came to the priest, it was the priest. They are paying the priests and the Levites for their service. Like you do for a pastor of a church. If he serves the church and does what, what he does with the church, he deserves pay. Too many churches starve their preachers, and that's not biblical. Paul says about the ox, reference to the preacher, he's worthy of his hire. Let him tread out the corn, let him eat the corn while he's treading it. And the tithe of all things brought they in abundance. So whatever the 10%, grapes, sheep, whatever that guy had in his house, honey, whatever it was, the 10%, he brought it to the priest and they gave it to the priest. And concerning the children of Israel and Judah that dwelt in the cities of Judah, they also brought in the tithe of oxen and sheep and tithes of holy things which were consecrated unto the Lord their God and laid them by heaps. Here's these heaps all over the place. They needed oil. They needed water. They needed spices. They need, And the people are bringing them. In the third month, Three months later, they began to lay the foundation of the heaps and finish them in the seventh month. Four months, can you imagine what four months of heaps? Heaps of corn, heaps of oil, whatever. And when Hezekiah and the princes came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people. They, they come walking out and was like, is that what the people's giving you guys? Oh yeah, look at it. Well, thank God. Praise the Lord. So, there it goes. And then Hezekiah questioned with the priests and Levites concerning heat. What are these heat? Thank the Lord. Uh, what are they? What's going on here? And Azariah, the chief priest, that's the high priest of the house of Zadok, answered and said, since the people began to bring their offerings unto the house of the Lord, we have enough to eat. Man, we are just full. And this is not leftover like, you know, you make a meal and then you put it in the refrigerator. This, what we have eaten, what we've taken care of, there's still more that they've given. And have left plenty. For the Lord has blessed his people. And that which is left is this great store. Now look at that. Store means heaps. When you go to a store, where they, they got great heaps of aisles. Of all kinds of stuff. And this is where the word store comes in the Bible. There's a whole bunch. I mean, how many different things of rice does a, does a store have? How many things that a store has of soda? How many heaps of corn, barley, wheat? I don't know how they divided it. It's this great store. Then Hezekiah commanded, commanded to prepare chambers in the house of, now those chambers are already there. Now evidently these heaps are outside and Hezekiah is like, well we got offices, we got rooms in the temple. Use them. And they prepared them, cleaned them out, got them all ready. And brought in the offerings and the tithes those tithes and offerings are two different. Tithes is 10%. We're under the new church, under the New Testament in the church, we're not obligated for tithes. But we are obligated with a loving offering to the Lord that we want, an offering. Tithes is 10%. That's the Bible, yep. Offerings is, all right, here's one tenth, I'm going to give more. Offerings giving more and you want to give not that you have to give but you want to give to the Lord So there's a big difference And the dedicated things faithful now dedicated would be I am giving this Just for the Lord I am dedicating this just to this one family And there's been in churches where I wrote a check out saying ten dollars goes here ten dollars goes here ten dollars goes here and that's dedicated to one office or one ministry. And that's proper too. Over which Kaniah, the Levite, was ruler. And Shimei, his brother, was the next. So there's people in charge. And Jehiel and Azariah and 
Nahas, and Nashel, and Jeremoth, and Josbab, and Eliel, and Ishmaqiah, and Meah, and Benaiah were overseers under the hand of Kaniah and Shimei, his brother. Now look at that. We got Kaniah and Shimei, they're in charge. They're the two chief men. They're not alone. Verse 13, all these men that are mentioned, they are under. We're counting. Let's say uh, something simple. I don't know. Let's say bales of hay. We counted 13 bales of hay. All right, you come over here, you count. Yep, 13 bales of hay. All right, you come over, make sure you count 13. They're making sure. They're counting each man to... That's what that man says. That is what that man said. I have recounted. That's what that it is sure. And that should be done in the church. It should be two or three men a minimum that counts that offering plate and has recorded how much money people have given. It should never be one man or one, one person to do the finances. And this is all finances. Whether it be wheat, whether it be oil, it's paying the, the Levites and the priests and they can turn it for money or use it for food. At the commandment of Hezekiah the king and Azariah, the ruler of the house of God. See, he's the ruler, that's the chief priest. And Kor, the son of Imna, the Levite, the porter toward the east, the door, person charged at the door, was, <coughs> was over the free will offering. I want to give God something. It's no uh, it's no strict that you have to give of God to distribute the oblations of the Lord and the most holy thing. So this guy's in charge of the free will. This free will that goes over here, that goes over there, that goes to that person, that goes to this person. There are people in charge, even in the house of the Lord. The next him was Eden. And Minimum Minimum and Jeshua and Shemaniah and Amariah and Shechaniah in the cities in the cities of the priests. And you'll find out in Joshua what those cities were. There were certain cities given amongst the children of Israel. Though Levi did not get an inheritance, a particular Parch of land, they got an inheritance of cities from the children of Israel all together. The cities of the priests and their set office to give to their brethren by courses, as well to the great as to the small. Payment, payday. You got to pay the priests of all the supplies we got. All right, this family gets this amount. That family, they, need, they have more. We got to give them more. That family, mediocre, we give them mediocre. That family, they're not so big, they're not so huge, we give them less. So there's some way distributing, allowing to get what they deserve. Beside the genealogy of males from three years old and upward, even unto everyone that entereth into the house of the Lord, his daily portion for their service, and their charges according to their courses, and it's a pay. It's their wages. And to the genealogy of all their little ones, their wives and their sons and their daughters throughout all the congregation, for, the, for in their set office they sanctify themselves in holiness. Right? You got eight, you got five children. You got eight children. You got two wives. Okay, we got to give you so you can support your family. We can't undergive you. We can't. Oh, it's almost like the manna. The manner was you when you went out, if you got too much, there was nothing over. If you got too little, you didn't lack, you you had that set amount. And to the Gina, uh, uh, verse 19, also of the sons of Aaron, Levi, priest. Aaron is the priest, his son, the priest, which were in the fields of the suburbs of their city, in every several city. The men that were expressed by name to give portions to all the males among the priests and to all that were reckoned by genealogies among the Levites. So here are the priests. Nobody outside the sons of Aaron were priests. They were Levites, but they weren't priests. 
All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah, and brought that which is good and right, and truth before the Lord his God. Look at that. He did it truthfully, honestly. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, and in the law, and in the commandments to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. There's perfect. Ready? And prosper. What is the definition of perfect? There it is, verse 21. Now, he may not have served God 100% as Jesus Christ did. But man, he gave it all his heart. He gave it his all. He put his heart, soul into it. I guarantee he had trouble with flesh. I guarantee he sinned. But man, he, God, the Holy Spirit says, all his heart. That's what you want to do. That doesn't mean he's a complete, absolute, you know, hero and all that. No. But God was pleased. 